So today I wanted to crank out a real quick project. Um, what I want to do is put uh, a set of headlights on my snowblower. Pick these guys up on eBay. I think they were about $15 for the pair of them. Um, LED, obviously. They're pretty nice construction, all considering. They're um, this nice aluminum chassis with this bolt integrated in the back of it, and then you have this this mounting uh, bracket you bolt right onto uh, whatever, and then you put this capture bolt in the back of it, and then that lets you tilt it as you need and hold it down in that position. So pretty nice. They uh, they obviously are designed for automotive, so they take a standard 12 volt DC. Uh, which is kind of half the problem because the snowblower I have, which I'll show you later, is an old uh, MTD yard machines and it has uh, a Tecumseh 8 horsepower and that thing generates 12 volts D, uh, AC. So to get into a little bit the differences between AC and DC, so if you look at something like... Uh, oh. Sorry, if you look at something like uh, current over time. So if this is time, and this is your current, DC is going to be nice and straight and flat and level. AC, on the other hand, uh, if this is zero current, AC is actually going to be fluctuating, rising and falling and rising and falling. And that's generally not bad for a lot of things like... Uh, standard incandescent light bulbs. If filaments heat up in one direction and they'll gladly take current in the other direction and they'll continue to heat up in this side and they'll generate a nice amount of light with uh, standard uh, AC like that. But LEDs are current limiting devices. So the electrical symbol is an arrow with a wall. They tell you that this current can flow this direction following the arrow, but current can't go back. So in an AC application, this is kind of bad because then it would only get the, uh, the current out of the positive sides of the AC current and it would do nothing during the negative sides. So the way we get around this is creating a device called a bridge rectifier so if we have AC coming in one side here, and let's see, if we put one diode here, and then we have another diode here. Sorry, this is a bad drawing. And then we have another diode here, and another diode here. So these guys are all linked together. So if we have, these are our two sources of AC power, then this would become our two sources of DC power. This would become positive and this would become negative. Bridge rectifiers are pretty nice. They're used all over the place when you want to convert AC to DC. So from this big swoopy wave, we'll end up getting something like this. We'll get a hopscotch. So that'll keep all the current going positive, uh, which is great for our LED. The one downside is we still have a point where there's zero current, um, where that falls all the way down to nothing. This can cause a little bit of flicker on some LEDs, and it only really depends on um, how you're viewing it. Like if the LED is moving fast in front of you, you'll see it easily. Um, so the way to get around this is you add a, another gizmo called a capacitor. And in this application, the capacitor is going to be smoothing. It's going to work a lot like a, a suspension in a car. So he's going to be storing a little bit of charge and then giving it away once the voltage starts going down. So instead of this hopscotch, we'll get a little bit of a wobbly hopscotch as it gets up charges and then falls and then charges and then falls so it'll try and smooth it out it won't be a hundred percent clean unless you have a lot of capacitance 
but it will get rid of anything going all the way down to zero so the LEDs will never completely turn off, which will prevent most of the flicker. So the way I'm going to do this stuff, uh, I, you can go out and obviously buy all these components easily um, out in the world. What I'm going to do is tear apart an old computer power supply. I think this was from a Hewlett Packard computer, one of those purple and gray monstrosities from the late 90s. Um, it's only, where's the label? Let's see, this is only rated for 120 watts, so it's not exactly a beast, which is actually kind of good for us because uh, AC comes in over here and it has all this nice filtering stuff dual mode chokes, uh, AC capacitors, suppression capacitors. Uh, th this would be really great to, if I could, you know, cut off this section and just use that entirely for us, but um, eh, some downsides, it's kind of big. So, like right here, this black box is the bridge rectifier. That's all it is. That's all it needs to be. It doesn't even actually need to be really cooled that much. There's not a whole lot of power loss in those. Um, especially for our application, the Tecumseh can only put out a total of like 18 watts. Uh, so this power supply is designed for, you know, almost 10 times that. So I'm not too concerned about thermal limits on this. And I'm not concerned about not uh, fuses because the, uh, the stator in those Tecumseh power, or Tecumseh engines can only generate one and a half amps. And um, if you take them to a dead short, they're not gonna die. They don't care. So that's that's all it's going to be. I'm not going to bother the fuse because there's not like an automotive application where you have hundreds of amps provided by the uh, the alternator um, where you can arc weld with that. This thing, uh, one and a half amp shorter chassis is not going to hurt anything. So I'm not going to bother with uh, a fuse. I will take this nice little bridge rectifier. This guy will be handy. It'll take a little bit to get soldered out of here, but that won't be too bad. I'll try and keep a track of which side is uh, positive and negative coming out of this, so I don't have to guess when I hook it back up. Uh, the AC doesn't matter which way is the phase, I don't think. I'll double check on this one, if it shouldn't. And um, from what I can gather with these two big filter caps I have here, these are actually in series for a, a voltage doubling reason. But uh, this is the negative side. So this side comes down here and so this side of the bridge rectifier is negative, so I'll try and make, I'll mark that before I desolder him out of here. Now, in terms of filtering capacitors, you would think these capacitors would be great. Um, they are, they're a nice Samsung branded, but they're 200 volt rated and they're only 220 microfarads. That's not enough. Even if I put these in parallel, it's not, not going to be really useful. Um, it'll help with the flicker, but it won't definitely won't stop it. The other stuff on here, unfortunately, there's actually not much uh, low-level filtering. Well, a lot of smoothing on here because these things are designed for high frequency, so they can get away with smaller capacitors um, when you're running at the higher frequencies. So the only one that's really applicable on here is this guy. This is a thousand microfarads, but only at 16 volts. So I plan to grab him. Uh, he's a Nietzsche Chemicon. So he'll be great, uh, should be great in terms of reliability. But I'll, when I pull him out, I'll check him with my uh, uh, ESR meter to make sure he's still alive, still usable. He should be. Other than that, then I can just get rid of this thing because I got enough components off of it to be worthwhile. I got a bunch of these capacitors, or a bunch of these old power supplies I need to get rid of. Uh, so those are the components I'm gonna grab. I'm gonna grab that bridge rectifier and this one smoothing capacitor, and that's probably all I'll actually really need in terms of electronics. Um, so what I plan to do then is I'm going to take this switch I had also, which had this uh, nice rubber-proof weather part. I'm going to put this on the console of the snowblower where the uh, speed select is, and um, this will be sitting off the top. Then I'm going to take this box from underneath, I'm going to draw a hole in him so my switch can go all the way clean through him. And this will be how I attach this box to the uh, to the snowblower. It will be held in position by the switch, so I don't have to put any extra fasteners anywhere. 
This box I got off eBay for another project. It's claimed to be waterproof, but it definitely isn't. Um, it was only like a dollar or something like that, but it's convenient for me. So I got two ports coming out the top here, which would be great for my two lights. And then I have one coming in, which would be the power coming in from the stator. So what I'll do is I'll put that, mount the box essentially upside down like this, the switch here inside of it. And um, then I'll stuff my components in here and all my wire connections will go right into here then too so I can seal this up from underneath with uh, put the lid back on and um, oh great just broke that off not needed um, then I'll close the lid with actually just two uh, zip ties the whole lid in I probably won't bother weatherproofing it at all it's uh, snowblowers do get wet but they don't get soaking wet and this is going to be underneath upside down so it's inherently going to be a little bit more protected um, so for wire then going around the thing I'm going to use some of this stuff I had from another project which is a nice two core uh, shielded wire or not shielded but a uh, sheathed so a little bit of extra protection running around and I'll just start zip tie and stuff everywhere to get that hooked up uh, I will go out and I'll show you the uh, the snowblower when I get ready to uh, hook this thing up and I'll show you that the snowblower has a little proprietary connector I'll have to chop off and uh, find some place on the chassis to uh, ground it so it complete the loop but uh, other than that we'll keep going at it and I'll get this thing together quick all right this is everything I can do with the bench I'm gonna have to go up to the snowblower and actually get this installed so AC power coming in this Going through the switch here first, uh, drilled a nice half inch hole through this box and then I ground down these extra plastic tabs and I bent over and broke off actually the screw tabs and just soldered the wires directly onto the switch and it makes it low profile enough to fit into this box with the lid still closing. So anyways, AC goes through the switch, goes through my bridge rectifier over here, uh, then the DC comes out over here, goes right to this capacitor and then I have these two extra wires off to the side here so then I can hook up the two uh, LED lights in parallel which I um, wired on an extension onto them so I can actually use them in their current state so I'll have to drill some mounting holes and get these wires through and then I can solder these guys on inside the box so uh, next trip is to the snowblower alright this is the old beast um, MTD yard machines, like I said, 26 inch. I can't remember how old this thing is. This is probably like um, late 90s, I think. So it comes with an old Tecumseh 8 horsepower engine. And um, it does have electric start. And it has a nice little wire hanging off the back of it, which is connected to the AC stator, which I think can deliver something like 12 volts AC and uh, one and a half amps, give or take, roughly. Um, 18 watts of power, which is uh, pretty much exactly what those LEDs need. So anyways, uh, I'm going to chop off this connector since it's some kind of proprietary thing. I can't find a, um, a mating connector to it, so I'm just going to put on a standard automotive spade connector. Probably use this bolt down here as ground. And um, I think I'm going to run my wires actually underneath the back here and then up this. <laughs> Up this guy here. I'm gonna mount my switch right about around here since this is a nice clear part on the panel. And uh, that'll have my box right underneath it. I'll have my, I think, my two headlights up top here. And I'll run the wires down here so I don't have to drill any extra holes. Obviously, one for the mounting holes. And uh, I think that'll be the big part of it. So I'm gonna start working on getting that getting this all installed and we'll just go with it we'll just fire it up won't bother testing anything see what it does all right here we are all done so two lights mounted nice uh, tucked in the wires in here so I didn't have to drill an extra hole in here got my nice little switch and if we look underneath got the little box right there ready to go wired in wire going down going over 
and connect it up to the existing power sources. So um, we'll see how this goes. I'm not exactly thrilled because this is, I was using light gauge wire and this stuff's pretty heavy and there might be some fatigue and stuff, but um, it should work at least for quite a while. But uh, I'm gonna fire it up now, see how it does. like a charm. You can't see the flicker um, in person. You can't see it on the camera, but seems to be doing pretty well. I'm happy.